All right. This is my new Weebly and Scott number one flare gun replica kit. Um, it's what Boba Fett's uh, EE3 blaster is based off of. Uh, it's going to be what some of I have some new custom uh, blasters, rifles, and stuff that I'm 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 doing and creating. Uh, this will be the base for some of those. I'll also be doing the EE3 version, Boba Fett's EE3 version, off of this. But this this is the base flare gun kit that I wanted to sell because you can't get your hands on one of these flare guns. And I know there's a lot of people out there that want to build their own Boba Fett replica. And they would like the, the, the base flare gun. And let them create all their own parts and gribbles and stuff that go on it and the scope, which is great. That's the reason I want to sell the kit uh, for just a flare gun. So we're going to go ahead and get this assembled. It's a uh, very simple. Uh, it assembles uh, in the exact same way as the actual flare gun does. Um, I've, in, I've added a couple extra screws here or there just for... Um, um, strength and whatnot uh, all of these parts like ever like all the other kits that i do they're all printed in a specific direction and way to make them extremely extremely strong this scope bracket right here if you end up or this uh stock bracket if you end up breaking this stock bracket uh you you've done something pretty significant um to the kit and and basically the same with um the, the grip and the receiver part of the body here, it, the way it's built and um, actually printed, it's it's pretty much almost 100% thick, solid. Uh, same with the barrel. We got the stock and all that. So what we're going to do here is, uh, I guess the, the easiest thing to do is let's get all the little intricate stuff like the trigger and and uh, the barrel release. And this does also, you know, the break over barrel part functions just like it's supposed to. Um, it, it's actually pretty awesome. So what, what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and um, the first thing we need to do is the hammer is actually two pieces. And that's because this the really cool sweeping hammer details, um, There's not there was not really a way to make it all one piece with a hammer and make it print and look beautiful. Um, so what we're going to do is let me get all this together here. All right. So we're going to just go in here and we're just going to add a little glue. And again, you can use regular, uh, thick super glue. I use CA glue because I like, uh, having the activator cause sometimes I need it to set instantly. Uh, and sometimes I need it to give me a minute. So there's there it's pretty dry, pretty much dry um and there's not but i think one the joint for the barrel and the back part of the stock so there's only three places that get glued the rest of it is all screwed together so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the trigger in and it there's uh two full length screw uh springs and a half spring that's included in this um, so what we do on these, if you take these springs and put them to the hole and twist them counterclockwise, they'll pop down in the hole and stay. So we'll get your body here and you'll have two very specific cheese head flat blade screws, the same length. Um, basically all the flat blades are cheese head to, to fit the correct time period for, for this replica. So what we want to do is get the screw started where the trigger goes and if you notice there's a hole down here where this uh, spring sets so we're just going to set it in there and this is kind of one of these you know if you've done this a few times you get used to having to hold the, the hammer and the or the trigger or the hammer parts and the springs all with tension on them and there I hit the hole the first time sometimes you have to like screw the screw in a little bit 
to where it touches and see if you're hitting the side and move it. Sometimes you can move it to the side and look from the side, but um, so there is our trigger. So let's get the hammer. So now down inside the body here, you're gonna see there's a hole um, where this spring sets. If I don't just keep dropping it. All right, so spring sitting in the hole. It's got the, the hammer has a, a slot on the back that the spring goes into. And this one's fairly easy. You just push it down in there and go ahead and put the hammer where it goes. And if you just hold the hammer to where the firing pin is coming through the body like it's supposed to, the hole is pretty much lined up. It's one of those luck things. Barely touched the side of the body of the hammer, so I just backed it up a tad and barely moved it, and we're in. So. So hammer works, cool. Barrel release. This is, is actually a, a very funky thing to, to draw and, and get it to work correctly because there's so many different things that it has to interact with. Uh, you've got these longer cheese head springs here. This, this one is gonna be the longer of them along with the last big spring. And what we'll do is we'll twist that into the body counterclockwise. You'll have to cock this back because on here and the, the, the real flare gun, the firing pin does go through the body and through here to hit the primer on the back of the, the flare gun shell. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this. It sits in the top there, there's a hole. Just push it down and if you'll notice there's a slot. Now what it is, is this screw goes straight down through that slot, which is exactly how the real one is. We'll tie that down. And so now what we have is that. All right. So then what we'll do is let, let's go ahead and glue together the barrel, which there's a notch that I've put notch. Um, which I've also put the print seam line is down on the bottom edge. So that's a real quick, just clean up and you're good and gravy there. So let's get this uh, glued on here. And man, this thing, I mean, this body piece right here, this is about eight hours because of how thick it is. And... The whole dang thing solid as can be. This barrel, this barrel piece. I mean, if you had to like fight off a wild hog or a horde of zombie children or something, um, yeah, you could do it with this. <laughs> Has to be zombie children though, not real children. All right. So basically, you're just gonna take this and you're just gonna set this on there. There's this big, the biggest screw in there, the biggest, th thickest, fattest screw there is. And you're gonna screw this directly in. Okay, now it's set. And you cannot, you cannot unlatch this, this barrel. It is so stinking stout. And see, it auto latches back just like the real one. So when you go to close it, I think you could even, yeah. So there you go. Goody, goody. Oh, crap. Hang on. Actually, let me take this back off real quick because the trigger guard needs to go on. Got all excited talking about the barrel and stuff. Okay. So you've got. 
you've got multiple um, Phillips head screws in here. Get out the glare of that. There's three um, of the same length. What you do is your trigger guard will go on. Let me swap out my bit here. Take one of the Phillips and drop it down in this hole that's inside. It comes through, and if you notice, there's a matching hole. Get it started. And all the awkwardness of holding all of this. Once it's almost tight, you just make sure it's straight with the body. Snug it down. All right. Then you've got the smallest of the cheese. Whoops. Sorry. Come on. Focus. The smallest of the cheese head screws, the flat blade cheese head screws. Okay. And there's a hole down here that it goes into, screws it to the bottom of the body here. If I can get all my stuff. I've been asked for this model for so many years now, and I wanted to do it, but I wanted to make sure I had time to sit down and do it right. And after doing like my Peacemaker Colt models and learning so, some way more in-depth mechanical things that I could do as far as strength and stuff goes with these kits. Um, yeah. All right. Before, well, before we put the barrel back on, we'll go ahead and just put the, uh, the, the stock and the whole thing together. First of all, on here, on... Um, I'll probably get to ask a hundred times why I didn't cut it back here or why I cut it at all. This stock has no flat spots on it to actually be able to attach it to anything to print. So there would have to be a seam in here no matter what. So I did the seam where I did because on the Boba Fett one, this is also where the, the stock gribbles go. So it's still a very small seam line once you glue it together and press it together, no big deal. I mean, I could have done it way back here, but then you'd have been working on the back edge. And, you know, you've got gribbles here to help cover the majority of that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go in here all the way around the edge. Gob it, gob it, gob it. And on this, I don't really want to put the activator on it yet. That activator will actually go right down in there so and you can see in the painted pictures uh, of the painted version that uh, Michael with fan fiction props did it took him probably all of about two minutes to make the seam line disappear when priming and, and getting it ready for paint um, it's very like directly across there's no high ridges or anything you could you could sand the edges if you wanted to before putting it together. Um, so what we'll do here is I, I didn't realize how really cool this was whenever, uh, until I got into making it and stuff, but they did some really cool different things here as far as like, as the real one had this notch that matched in the body to help keep it from like twisting because on the real one, there's one screw that goes in here all the way through to the grip and that is the only thing that holds the whole thing to keep it from twisting and binding well what i did is on the flip side i went ahead and put these other two phillips right here to attach but mainly it's not just to attach it is stability wise because i wanted you to be able to take this back apart if if you wanted to needed to whatever so then the grip simply goes on there and um take one the the last three uh cheese head flat blades are the same length one goes to hold on the grip Oh, 
flat blade screws. I'm so glad they're not a standard anymore. <clears throat> there we go. Solid. Not going nowhere. All right. So then what we'll do is we can go ahead and put the stock on. So the stock is going to be held on with these last two. Now, there's one thing, and I, I try to remember to mention it in every video or, or in any of my like frequently asked questions, but pretty much from the very beginning, these screws start threading into the stock. And what I do on all my kits, the screws cut the threads as you screw them in. It's just because it's impossible to print threads that small and make them functional for any use whatsoever. So I always, whenever I'm, uh, the screws are long and they're going in into a very deep hole that they're having to thread the whole way through, I'll screw them in and stop. I'll screw them in, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or whatever, stop and go to another one and come back. Because the reason is, is no matter what type of plastic it is, ABS, nylon, whatever, screws cutting into anything especially plastic there's so much friction so much heat that builds up it will distort the plastic but if you stop and let it set not only will that plastic set and form really nice threads but you don't have to worry about it the heat messing up, up the hole and that's also why i tell people do not use a drill to put screws into a model I don't know how many times I've had to like repeat that to people. Just don't do it. There's no need for it. I know some of the screws, there's a, there's it's long winded to screw them in. And then what I do is when I get to right where they would tighten down, I stop and I'll let those screws completely cool for a minute. And when I come back and hit them, I can torque the crap out of them and it's going to pull down super tight and you won't ever have to worry about them coming back out. Okay, so there you go, full full stock length. I'm six foot four, so this goes from my elbow forward just like it's supposed to, the exact one-to-one -one scale of it. So then, let's put this dude back on. My hairy arm. There it is. So that's the whole that's the whole whole beautiful, really cool. I just I love all of these old firearms, these old whether it's the flare guns or whatever, just the the the, the ideas and the things they came up with. We're just, just so freaking cool. Like, never in my wildest dreams, when I started looking at this bracket right here and the way it was designed and the latches and stuff, I was like, there's no way when it folds close, it's going to hold. And I'm telling you right now, you will break this somewhere before you get that latch to come loose. Um, like I said, I'm going to be using this for a big rifle. And my concern and thought was, is I was, I was, go, it was going to resemble this, but I was going to remove the breakover part and actually not have it break over because I was scared by the time I put good length amount of barrel on it and stuff that this would suffer. It's not an issue. It's going to be there. <laughs> so but there it is. Spring loaded hammer, trigger, spring loaded barrel release barrel is is hollow all the way through so there it is